Hi everyone, I'm so excited to have Erica from Babold Sleep here. Welcome Erica. Thank you very much Yvonne. We get so many questions either about uh, milk or sleep because it has so much to do with weaning. So intertwined yes. really, you know, there's not one without the other. No, no, there's a, like I always say that there's so much going on in the first year and it's about kind of looking out there for all of the resources and one of those is sleep and one of them is your your website you will actually do an online course as well I do I do the sleep series yes. yeah yes. we'll have yeah. to chat about that so we I want to talk to you today about kind of um sleep and schedules and and weaning as well like so I'll, I'll kind of come in there where what I what I would believe yes. is is a good kind of schedule and um, so you might go and tell us what from you know six months so the mom has maybe started at around five, five and a half months and they've kind of done that two weeks of gradually getting into um, purees and then at six months then, you know, we're on three meals a day, we're on, uh, you know, hopefully still two naps and sleeping through the night. Maybe three. <laughs> or maybe three, maybe okay. three, six yeah. months, yeah, three. Okay. So I suppose my ideal schedule is that you would start your day every day at a very similar time with your baby. Yeah. So I have a great marker at 7 a.m. If your baby, if you're lucky enough, your baby's still asleep at 7 a.m., start your day. And that way, you have a stepping stone. And you have a way so of creating... So how do you push it to that 7 a.m.? Just not go near them if they're cool, like... If you have a baby that's content in their cot, yeah. maybe, and they're waking after 6 o'clock, giving them a little bit of time yeah. once they're content, it's fine, yeah. but then if they're starting their day kind of like a quarter to seven, yeah. anywhere really between six yeah. and seven o'clock is fine. Because actually, on that, like if you if the baby is kind of wake at six and you were to give them food or give them milk, then their body clocks would, exactly. would wake up, and that's what they'd wake up every day. Exactly, that's kind of their routine. Yes. Then that's their reinforcement around. Well, my expectation in my body yes. is is food at that time. Yeah. So similar for waking in the night, isn't it? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Be, to a point. Yeah. And like a breastfed baby on three solid meals a day could absolutely still be waking at night for yeah. a feed at yeah. six months. Yeah. But really when you get to about nine months, that's when I would be looking at the situation going, what's going on around feeding? Yeah. What's going on around sleeping and self-soothing yeah. that could be kind of having an implication on the waking yeah. at night yeah. side of things. Yeah. But structure is key. Oh, it is. It really is key. So if you have that, like, um, you kind of push it to seven o'clock, um, and then you have your the milk. I milk. think the milk is first, definitely. Breast feed, bottle feed first, yep. absolutely. Because it's Good the most Im feed. it's the most important, really. Yeah. Um, and then an hour later, I would yeah. suggest around ten, around eight. Sorry, yes. around eight. Yeah. They have their breakfast. And I would be exactly the same. Yeah. And I put together routines for families. That's exactly what I would do. An yeah. hour later, because you're giving a bit of time. Yes. A little bit of time in the yeah. tummy to settle. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have my salads now. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. You know, a little bit of time. And I think like um, mix it up obviously, but something like um, a cereal, like if it is around six months, you have to be careful that um, you know you've followed the gluten guide. Yeah. Um, but if you've you know you've done all your allergens, um, you can offer porridge, you can offer Weetabix. Um, but I always think a bit of fruit with it as well is good. Yeah, Weetabix and fruit was always yeah. a great starter yes. for my crew when they were around that yeah. age. And porridge as well. And my porridge my is good, yeah. first guy, not so much with the porridge, yeah, but my yeah, second yeah. two absolutely yeah. loved it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, you can do eggs as well. You could, um, you could have lots of different foods. Yeah. It actually doesn't matter. And some people actually, um, on the early stages of weaning, who don't really want to give those fruit purees do vegetables um, for breakfast and the baby will accept them. It's just our perception. Yeah, yeah. We want the fruit. We yeah. want the fruit. Yeah, it's what we think yes. is right for breakfast time. But if you go on to the continent, they would do a lot of like yes. protein ba based breakfasts and hams and eggs yes. and cheeses and vegetables yes. at breakfast time. It's just the way that we kind of are exactly. geared towards it. So, so don't kind of um, uh, get kind of too much into one thing the same thing every yeah. morning every morning like you know mix it up with the wheat fix and the porridge um, and the eggs one other day um, but also give it in a different way so sometimes I say um, you know give finger food of of um, fruit or puree yes or great yeah yeah, so, and that, that's what I would yeah. say too, to mix it, up, mix it up, offer different things. And if there's a little bit of refusal going on, I don't know how you feel yeah. about this, but 
to not automatically no. offer the thing that they, you know they love. That's the alternative. That's the alternative. But we all learn from alternatives. And I learned the hard way with I that. learned from it as well. I, I, and I still think I do it sometimes yeah. because it's the easier, easy option. And then we're all busy and we're all juggling everything. Yeah. And if you know they're going to eat that, that one meal, yes. You could be I, I always say, that. I always say, like, um, you know, if I meet a mum or a dad with a fussy eater, and oh, most certainly they'll say they like peas and corn. <laughs> so oh it's yeah, like, yeah. It's corn. like it's like the default vegetables because it's easy for a mom or dad to prepare it, so they're more um, likely to eat it yeah. because it's it's um, they're they're used to it. So yeah, that's why we have to be really careful to to, to add mix variety. It up. Mix add it variety. Up. Yeah. Okay, so we've had uh, hopefully through the night, seven o'clock, um, and they wake up and they have their milk feed, and then an hour later, which would be really great, and um, their breakfast. Yes. And what, what I can think what that does is it gives them that time to kind of um, be hungry again. Yes. Yes. Because that's a lot of uh, milk actually at yeah. that stage. So we do need that gap. And then uh, when is the when is the nap? At around six months, you would be looking for them to be going down for their first nap of the day at nine o'clock. This does evolve on a little bit closer to nine months and ten months, where it would be about half past nine. Okay. So what why does that happen? Because naturally, their body is evolving. Okay. All the developmental milestones okay. that go on mean that a child's ability to stay awake or okay. a wakeful period, okay. as I would call it, shifts. Okay. So usually between six and nine months, this yeah. shifts on a little okay. bit. So it's marginal. Okay. But then there is loads of babies. This is what I mean. I don't. I always say this: babies are not robots. No. They don't always fit into these like things that we try to do with them. No. But you know, some babies will retain a nine a.m. Yeah. nap forever, and some babies will need it shifted on. Okay. But six months nine o'clock so now. just kind of be more aware of that so that you're not forcing the nine o'clock one when they're because they're still wide awake exactly if, it, yeah. if it's taking a child you know kind of 20 minutes to settle down for a nap yeah. and they're you know they're able to initiate sleep themselves and you've got a good like structure around that going on yeah then your baby's potentially that's not right. i think that's enough. really good advice now i i did have the babies who went down at nine i think they're always i don't yeah. remember them ever um I don't remember that far back, but it's like it's like I don't remember. I remember them go down at nine and getting up at eleven. That yes. is great. Yeah. And um, so you aim for that, but as as Erica said, that you can kind of go to half nine. Yeah. Okay. So you know, fantastic if they sleep till eleven because when I say that in my class and I say you know nine to eleven, they're all like, oh, not at yeah. Oh. So what I would typically yeah. see, Siobhan, is that at that at that age range, you would probably get about forty-five minutes. Okay. And um, if you were getting kind of above that okay. I actually would advise that you cap that nap at an hour okay because actually and we probably will get to it in a minute but yeah. the second nap is the most important okay. nap of okay. the day for a baby okay the first nap is mentally restorative okay. the type of sleep that it is and the hormones yeah, that are going yeah. on it's mentally restorative the second nap is physically restorative okay okay so, so you're okay with a half an hour to I'm okay with kind of I love 45 minutes yeah love that um, I'd love an hour, yeah. but again, not robots, you kind of have to see what pattern a baby gets okay. into. Okay, yeah. so if, because some mums find that nap really difficult, or they're, they're just a very social mom or dad, and, and right. they want to be out, yeah. and the baby only gets the half hour. Grand job. Okay. Absolutely. Wow. I'm, okay. I'm all for uh, what I call the 80-20 rule. Okay. We can't be tied to our houses all day long, no. because we'll actually go insane. No. You yes. need to get out, you need to get Mental fresh health. air. Mental <laughs> health. Self-care. Self-care. Even if that's a coffee and a bit of cake, self-care. Yeah. So, absolutely. If that nap is an out and about nap, and it's half an hour, 100%, that's okay. fine. But I suppose prioritizing then the second nap of yes. the day to be a cot nap okay. is really okay. important. Okay. Really, really important. And yeah. I think that might fit into people's lives better because, mm. you know, um, maybe they have an older child or maybe there's something in the in the afternoon and they can be back here. Yes. Back in the house. Um, and in the morning is for them to kind of enjoy being on maturity leave. Yeah. I remember going to a baby cinema. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that was like for me. <laughs> it was yeah, for yeah. me. I, gym Bree was a thing for yeah. me. I used to do a couple of days a week and just walking, yeah. like as for anyone following me knows I'm really into exercise. So yeah. Getting my runners on and my gear yes. and walking okay. with the buggy yeah. was really, really important yeah. to me. It is, it is. And we need to look after the moms and the dads. 100%. We need to look after them. Yeah. Okay, 
So going back to kind of what we said earlier, where we want to push it to um, seven o'clock before we have the milk, I think we still push it till 11 o'clock to still have the milk, even yeah. though we might not only have a half hour. So I'd be kind of going, okay, somewhere between half 10 and 11 okay. at six months, there would be another milk feed okay. due there or thereabouts, yeah. okay? But you're trying to push it rather than straight away give it no, a milk No, I feed. would try and structure things. Yeah. Okay. So I would find at this age range, kind of leaning away from a demand led mm -hmm. and gently going towards structure is gonna help with routine yeah. and ultimately sleep as well. Yeah. Okay. And help too with the baby's ability to take a good solid meal. Yeah. If, if they're snacking all day long, yeah. uh, you know, then they're not gonna be able to take no. a full tummy of solids. No. No. Do you know, because there, there'll be a baseline of food in there all the time. And actually milk is a lot easier to, do, to drink and to yes. kind of snuggle into mom if you're yeah. breastfeeding. So, lovely. so sometimes weaning then gets discarded for a while because they're they're like ah, I haven't any of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. So uh, structuring it is going to help with them taking okay. these good solid meals. So, so if they have um, milk then around half ten, mm. let's say the earlier of between half ten and eleven, I would always say like uh, dinner first dinner, and I call it the first dinner because when you call it a lunch or a tea, we get completely Fused. confused. Yeah. So it's first dinner, I would say around 12, half 12. But if we're eat, having a bottle at half 10, then maybe, do you bring that back a bit? I would say that you bring it, you use that kind of hour yeah. rule that you had going yes. on there. Right. So let's say your bottle is at 11, maybe your first dinner, I love that, yeah. um, is about 12 yes. o'clock. And then you would be looking at doing your nap thereafter straight away not straight away because you don't want to no. put a baby into a cot lying no. down on their back with a big full tummy no. they're going to be uncomfortable yeah. and I, I refer to this an awful lot in relation to reflux yeah. if you put a baby lying down full of what could actually irritate yeah, their tummy yeah. They're going to be unsettled. So how long then would you give it? I would probably give it about half an hour. Half an hour. Half okay. an hour. And I would be inclined that that meal, and I don't know how you feel about this, would be protein based. Okay. Because protein is a small bit more difficult to digest. Yeah. And it gives that feeling of full for longer. Yeah. So this magical two yeah. hour nap that parents yeah. want in the middle of the day yeah. is more likely to happen if your baby is well satisfied okay. and protein can give that yeah. satisfaction. I would actually, I would always say oh, if good. you're, yeah, if you're adding the protein, you, you do it in the middle, middle of, of the day. day. And I would too. But there's no harm in having a second and a protein in the other meal as well. Uh, absolutely yeah. not. But if it was that you were doing like a pasta and sauce, then I maybe do that as a second meal. And that's kind yeah. of what I would go towards yeah. as well. That maybe your second meal, well, your your dinner or tea. Dinner two. Last, yeah, dinner, dinner two. two. Dinner two. <laughs> uh, would be maybe. I have to come up with some name. No, I like it. I like dinner one and dinner two. That potentially would be carby kind yes. of based. Yeah. So your pasta. Yeah. And I also find sometimes with this age range that we're kind of talking about six months. Yeah. Sometimes the protein at the end of the day can cause gassiness. Okay. And I've seen that. Yeah. And yeah. so offering it in the middle of the day yeah. helps you avoid any potential tummy yes. issues heading into bedtime. But also kind of, if we talk about meat as well, like we shouldn't be offering meat twice a day. And would you eat? I wouldn't eat meat no, twice a day. No, I wouldn't And I would only eat, um, you know, I'd only eat meat actually three times out in the, in the family meals every, yeah. every week. So we have to kind of, you know, I am all for introducing meat at six months and purely because of texture actually mm. and not necessarily about the um, the nutritional value of or it. Or the protein. Or the protein. You know, there's no other ways to get it. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So, but if you say, and I had a, a girl at the class the other day and she said, she's a vegetarian, she wants the child to be a vegetarian, but when the child goes to the grandparents, she wants it to eat meat. I said, that you won't. No, it won't, won't like that. It won't yeah. eat meat. Yeah. So, and the reason for it is because it's just so different. If you blend a puree of fruit and vegetables, there's no texture. If you blend a puree with chicken in it, it's got this like street taste yeah, in it. Yeah. It's so different that the child, if they're not given that at an early stage, they'll reject it. Mm. But it doesn't mean you have to give it at every meal. And I think, I think you're right, Nia. If you have the protein in the middle of the day, and then the next meal without meat, but you know, it's still like protein in another it form. It could lentil. Exactly. I remember making something when the kids were small, and I made it for years and yeah. years and years. 
it was out of another person's book because <gasps> you weren't around by the end of the phone. <laughs> and, and it was lentil based and it was lip smacking good. It was so good. I used to love when they yeah, wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't yeah, eat yeah, the yeah, end yeah. of it and I'd have it. But um, yeah, that was a go to in the evening time as kind of the second yeah, dinner. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, because it was lentil based, it was going to be filling and nutritious yeah. and there was sweet potato in it. It was yeah, really lovely. Yeah. But I would be the fan of the kind of like maybe casserole style yeah. things in the middle of the day. So those are the batch cooks. So those you're, are the batch yeah, cooks. Yeah, because you're not going to ha be having your dinner at lunchtime. So therefore, it's not going to be like a fresh meal. And um, so what you would have done is you would have previously cooked mm. it and you would have taken it out the night before and then served that dinner Yes. Um, in the morning. And that's well, exactly what I would have done because mine always had a child minder. Yeah. So I would have done all that batch cooking and had yeah. the drawer full of stuff all labelled yes. and take it out the but night you're, before. You're super mum. Well, no, I don't know about that. I know you are. <laughs> no, all, all out the night. The, the two things yes. maybe because we weren't getting home until much yes. later. So the two meals all out for the kids yeah. so that our minder could give them the good nutritious food I wanted her doesn't to it, But doesn't it give you such a sense of satisfaction as well? I think I, I was very similar. Um, but you know, like it, it is doable. I, I had mums actually again at the class asking me would they, um, you know, what do I think about food purchase? And I think, you know, I'm not nasty. I'm not, you know, I think it's a bit of balance. As you said, the age Great. 20 rule, yeah. isn't it? Great. Age 20 rule for yeah. everything. And um, so, you know, just make sure that you um, decant it into a yes. bowl and heat it and feed it like you would normally. That's the only, yes, only thing I have so against it. it no. Yeah, and I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, or the ones that have the spoon built into the end of them. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, no. <Deep> <laughs> Yeah, no, I always had, I never went for the jar jar yeah. things that are on the shelf that have a shelf life of like way too long. I always went for the kind of fresher based, maybe yeah. handy meals. Were they in the fridge? In the fridge. Okay. Um, more recently they kind of have come on stream. I found yeah. I had them with Kate who's now eight and Patrick who's now four. Not with Quinn when he was 10, he's 10 now. Yeah. But I would have always had a stash of yeah. those yeah. because let's face it life is busy and yeah. you mightn't get to do your big no. batch cook because no. you've had a family party or something at the you weekend. see it all comes down I mean, we're kind of going off topic yeah. but it actually all comes down to taste so if you if you only give um processed food or even food from yeah. the fridge like that it has a certain taste mm. but if you mix that in with your own enough yes. enough you won't uh, develop that that uh, processed taste totally and i definitely yeah. have experienced that yeah. with my children yeah definitely so brilliant. So we've now had so we've now had our um you know our second our first dinner and yeah. then we'll go down for a nap a half an hour later. So be that half, twelve or one. Ish. There or there. Depending on how we're, we've done. Yeah, okay. depending on how the day is going, depending on what your child's wake period tolerance yeah. is. Around six months, yeah. it would probably be about two hours there or thereabouts. Okay. okay. So that's what we're looking for. That's what you're looking for. And we're for. looking for it back in a cot. Dark room. Absolutely. No Back sound. in the cot, dark room. I'm not a fan of white noise at that age range. Okay. I believe that allowing them to sleep with household noise is really important. Because you'll end up doing the white noise everywhere. Like even on a plane and stuff yes, like that. Yes, everywhere yeah. because you'd be trying to block out noise yeah. all the time. So trying to do that is to me counterproductive. Yeah. So allowing them to get used to toilets flushing, showers going, presses banging, okay. siblings fighting, yeah. those kind of very normal day to day. These are friends when they were when we were younger, like before we were having the baby, they were like, Oh, I'm gonna have Blair and music yeah, downstairs yeah. and they're going to sleep through tip And they did do that. Oh yeah, and they probably slept. And they slept absolutely yeah. fine, whereas we were like, Shh, don't ring the yeah, doorbell. Yeah, don't bring signs on don't the door. Do that. <laughs> and yes, the doorbell can be problematical, right? Because yeah. it is sharp. But no, I'm not a fan of white noise okay. or lullabies or you know any kind of thing okay. shining up at the ceiling because melatonin, which is the sleepy hormone, yeah. is best doing its job in darkness. Okay. So once your room is good and dark, as dark as possible, yeah. it can help your baby initiate yeah. and maintain its sleep. Okay. So that's quite important. Okay. So a nice dark room in a cot and cot napping is yeah. going to be more restorative than I any heard, yeah. bogey nap. Yeah. Any bogey and they nap. learn everything that they've kind of, it, it's back, they learn everything they've done like well, in that day. That, that actually happens in the morning now. Oh does it? Okay. And, and at night. Okay. The middle of the day nap is more physically restorative. Okay. Okay. And the middle of the day nap is where growth might take yeah. place. I don't know if I've often taken a baby out of a cot and gone, oh my god you've grown. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Do you know, so Amazing. It's, that's physically yeah. restorative. The type of sleep and the hormone yeah. release is physically yeah. restorative. 
And we would love to see that nap be the longest nap of the yeah. day because that is the nap that your child will hold on to until yeah. they're two and a half yeah. or three. Okay. And you want it falling in the middle of the day to create balance. Brilliant. So that's the focus. And you're right, like it is, because you know you do drop the morning nap. Yeah. And um, it fizzles out itself. And then that was really important. Really, really important. I, was, but I, I had my kids like till about three or, oh God, I can't remember, but I remember it being really important for us. Oh yeah. And I, it, it ruined our lives for a couple of years because we had to be somewhere but to sleep. It anchors but it's you. it's really important. It, it, it's really important. Yeah. And I think if we can get into our minds of making sleep a priority yeah. in our family lives, yeah. then you'll benefit. Yes. You'll just benefit. Yeah. And yeah, does it restrict you? A little bit. Yeah. But yeah. when you're sleeping 11 or 12 hours at night, that's where you're going to yes. see the gain. Yeah. Do you know? Because it does, doesn't it feed into them sleeping well at night? Because the they've more rested. rested a baby okay. is during the day, the more likely they are to yeah. maintain sleep at night. So if, if we've gone down at half um, 12 or 1 yeah. and we've, we're up at about half 2 or 3. Lovely. Um, again, breast or bottle. Yep. Really important. Yep. Um, and then we're trying to leave another hour gap between dinner. Yeah, I would kind of look at that second dinner happening around maybe half four or okay. no later than five. That would normally be my guide. So if they're up at three, that's an hour and a half later? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, that'd be about six months, Yeah. you know, that they would be getting up at three-ish, they'd have a lovely yeah. good feed at that time, breast or bottle yeah. feed. And then you might go out and about, you might go for a yeah. walk or whatever. But at six months, there's still going to be another sleep. Yeah. And okay. generally, that third nap will happen yeah. between four and five o'clock. Okay. So your child is resting during that time, yeah. sleeping, and that can be an out and about nap. Yeah. I actually find it's good for that nap to be an out and about nap yeah. because that's the first nap your baby okay. will drop. And um, how long is that now? Um, it depends on the child. Uh, some children need the full hour, some children it's four to five minutes. Okay. But the closer they get to seven and eight months, that nap starts to naturally drop off. Okay. So it'll get shorter and shorter and shorter okay. and shorter until so it's So tell gone. me, what time is that nap? Between four and five o'clock. Okay. Awake okay. by five. So if they've had milk, will they have the food before that nap? No, after would be my after, after would be my advice. Yeah. After so they have a um, breast milk um, or bottle of milk after the after, second nap. Yeah. And then they go down for another nap. Yeah. How long between that? Mm, I, you're probably looking at that that nap starting at some point between four, four and half four. four. There, okay. thereabouts. Depends on the baby. Yeah. And this is what I mean by they're not robots. Yeah. You kind of have to feel your way with this yeah, one yeah. as to what suits your okay. child. But at six months, it would be rare. I would see a baby not napping. Okay. A third nap. Okay. It'd be rare enough. So they have the third nap and then they get up and then again they're they're hungry now for their second dinner. So second dinner yeah, happens yeah. at that time. So they're Brilliant. up yeah. and you've come in the door maybe after having a walk, lovely fresh air, and it's second yeah. dinner time. And as you said, more carby than protein based. Yeah, yeah. like I my go to's would have been like those lentil yeah. things or pastas yeah. and um kind of like your lovely finger food, yeah, you know, yeah. those kind of things. Yeah. Um so they would have been my go-to's and okay. I find those very handy for those tea bays yes. for second yeah, dinners. Yeah. And then you're looking at another milk feed thereafter. Yes. Um, and that milk feed I like to see happening about an hour or 45 minutes prior to bedtime. Yes, I've heard this. Yes. Yes, because you don't want, again, the baby lying down with a big full tummy. Big full tummy and also yeah. the disassociation of feeding from sleep. Yeah. So a baby doesn't need to be full up to the gills yeah. right before bedtime for yeah. them to be able to sleep very no. well. They need to be full and satisfied. In fact, in fact, they'll actually pass out with it and then wake up on like Christmas <laughs> Day, you know, Christmas Day yeah. where you have that food coma. Yeah. Like food coma. And also, if yeah. your child is inclined towards reflux being an issue, yeah. if they're going down with this big full tummy, it's very likely yeah. they'll be quite irritated. Okay. So I like to advise the people that I work with and just generally yeah. about an hour or 45 minutes yeah. prior to bedtime, last milk feed of the day in a brightly lit room yeah. that is isn't associated with sleep. Okay. So like kitchen, living room, okay. somewhere like that. Okay. Because the disassociation of feeding from sleep yes. is an important an important step at this age yes. range. I actually and I all, and everything is about what what you're going to be doing at one, and you want to get rid of that bottle. Oh, yeah. So it's easier to do something like that. Yes. And like we had um, a pediatric dentist. Oh. And 
it's really important to get rid of that bottle by one. Yes. Because of the teeth yes. decay. Yeah, yeah. And we don't think about that. We yeah. think, you know, think of it sticking a bottle into the child's mouth actually is, is fine, but actually it decays in the back yes. of the teeth. And I do speak to parents about this when there's yeah. a lot of like evening time feeding and nighttime feeding that, yeah. that like kind of milk lying on teeth will have an effect on it teeth. Will, yeah, it over will. time. It will. Yeah. That's, that's brilliant. Yeah. I never, I didn't do that myself actually. And, and that's a really good tip is to, have it down here, have the bottle, and then half an hour later to 45 minutes, they go to sleep. Yeah, so you'd be looking at this age range um, of six months at them going to bed at about seven o'clock. Okay. That's the ideal, yeah. you know, seven o'clock yeah. ideal, because if they're awake by five from that last yeah. nap, yeah. you've got your two hour awake yeah. window, and they'd be looking to go down to bed okay. at about seven, that they'd be tired. Without a bottle, because they've already had Without a Without a bottle, feed. and then there is the- Are they just, do you just cuddle them, read, read them, and put them down? I, I have a very How simple bedtime it? routine. So for me, bedtime routine starts with that last milk feed at about six o'clock. Yeah down here you do your feed you finish your feed and maybe quiet play time in your, okay. in your kitchen or your living room yeah. floor play yeah. that kind of yeah. thing if you've older children i advise turning off the television because mm. blue light is mm. you know really really bad for sleep and it's very stimulating and you start into this kind of wind down period okay and i find this hard because yeah. i'm generally only coming in the door at half past five and it's all a bit crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'm at the stage where children are going to activities yes. and everything but when you've got smaller kids, yeah. you're more likely to be at home. Yeah. Turn off the TV, do your quiet yeah. floor play, and probably about 20 minutes before bedtime. Yeah. Okay, up the stairs, or if you live in a bungalow, down to their room, yeah. change the nappy into pajamas, yeah. sit into a chair, and do like age appropriate books. Yes. Be they touchy books, feely books, yeah. little stories, maybe sing song, yeah. but you're yeah. taking it all down, yeah. nice and yeah. calm. Don't you, you don't do the baths and all that and massages oh, and all and that. that. No, no, I'm I'm all for. Then you have to keep doing it. Yeah, no bath every second night, maybe even every third. Yeah. Like honestly, the, a bath is not necessarily going to help your baby sleep. It's a nice part of, of it. It is routine. nice, but what happens is you have to do it every night then if you've done it. If you get into this rhythm. Yeah, yeah. And it can strip skin. Yeah. Do you know? So, no, every other night, I every think. Every other night. And yeah. if you're doing a bath, I actually believe it's best to do the bath straight after the dinner. Okay. Because they're likely to be very mucked up after the dinner. Yeah, and hot and you do, sweaty. You're hot and sweat. They go yeah. up to the bath, they have their bath, they're cleaned off, they're into their jammies, and you're down the stairs and you do yeah. your feet. Yeah, okay. That's, that's, that's that would brilliant. be what I would do. Love it. And what I'd advise my clients yeah. to do. But if they're going to bed, you're doing your little 20 minutes of wind down in their room, your cuddles, your time, your stories, and when it's time, you've given them time into their cot. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is the thing that parents find, I suppose, hard in the transition, yeah. particularly around six months. Because if their baby <clears throat> hasn't quite grasped their own ability to fall asleep, yeah. you're getting into maybe yeah. the rocking, the holding. Yeah, yeah. And if you're in a cycle of feeding to sleep, yeah. then that's maybe going to happen again yeah. there. So that's where I would kind of gear families towards working on their own self-soothing okay. skills and looking at that. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. So if they go down at seven, yes. um, do you do that dream feed up until seven I'm, and a half months? Or? I'm a fan of the dream yeah. feed. I'm a big fan of it um, yeah. until a child is sleeping well through the night. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it ticks, us, ticks what I call boxes of doubt. Yeah. So if you're giving another dream, another feed, so a dream yeah. feed, um, at about half past ten. Okay. That's kind of a good time for me. I think okay. it's a nice time. Half past ten. Yeah. Dream feed. And at six months, a bottle fed baby has every chance of being able to sleep through the night yes. if they're on three solid meals yes. a day. Breastfed baby, there's every chance yeah. there will be another feed in what I call the core night. Yeah. So maybe somewhere between two or three o'clock okay. in the morning, another feed. Okay. But it's not too much for them then in the morning. So that's about See, that's, that's about correct parents gauging yeah, it. Okay. So if you're finding that your baby isn't hungry in the morning. Yeah. Then it's too much at night. Then okay. potentially yeah. you have a feed going on at night that is topping them yes. over. You know that yeah. they're that they're not. Got they don't that, actually need it, but they but they're waking it. for yeah. it. And you have to look at maybe how to fade that feed out okay. and try and make the night link up and become yeah. consolidated. 
Okay, so we're going to wrap up now and kind of, you know, actually we will provide, um, Erica will kind of, you let yes. us know what, what your um, little your routine, routine, routine yeah, is. For six months um, old. Because it's, it's just a little bit, maybe the half hour is kind of a little bit different than what I've put out there. But, you know, I always do an asterisk on schedules and go, it's, a, you know, it's up to... It's a guide. It, it's a guide. It's a guide. I don't want to be killing anybody who's in a routine and then they see my routine. And then it's like, yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, no. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. and I do this all the time with clients that, you know, their child's in the napping routine, maybe slightly differently yeah. to mine, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Like, it's grand. Brilliant. Let's see what happens. Listen, I want to know about your sleep series. Oh, like, thank you. Oh. Yeah. So the sleep series is an online course, all Brilliant. video based. It goes through all of the age ranges, but it's separated out into different courses depending right. on the age range. And it's all video-based learning. All video-based learning with Super. a few little resources, you know, um, yeah. with it, yeah. and then they get the access to the private Facebook Amazing. page in terms of support. It's very similar to ours, because yeah. I'm not I think you know what it works. We did our research and we found mums just don't have time to be reading blogs, or they don't no. have time to be reading books, and. It's, it's actually about, you said it before, about you know being able to press pause on a video. And go away and yeah. put the, the stuff into the machine and rewind <laughs> and maybe take your notes. But yeah, that was the same as me. The research was showing me that people were falling asleep yes. reading books and not taking it in. Yeah. Um, so doing this was the right way yeah. for me. And it's, it's doing great. So Excellent. Yeah, I'm delighted with it. Brilliant. Delighted. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming in. Um, we're delighted to have you. And as I said, we'll have that. Uh, sample schedule. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.